this unit we've been talking a lot about ratios, the different ways you can write a ratio, things like that, um, equivalent ratios, all of that stuff. Now, remember, the very first video that I talked about with ratios, it had to do with the definition of ratios. And basically what the definition is, is comparing two quantities and basing it on division. Okay, you're taking two quantities, you're comparing them using division. And we shied away from the division part, and I've talked about that before because I didn't think you were ready for it because you needed to build a firm foundation of ratios before we could get to the division part. Otherwise, it'd be really hard. Well, now we've got that firm foundation about ratios and equivalent ratios and all of that stuff and knowing that there's you know, a way we can write them using them like a fraction and things like that. We've got a good base. Now we can move on to the division part of the ratio, and that's what we're going to talk about today, which is unit rates. Now, unit rates are very important in real-world applications. That means we can use it all the time in the real world. And let me give you an example. Is that if I am going to, say, go to the store and I'm going to buy groceries, I need to know some things that are better deal. If you've ever seen something like a product where, say, if it's like a box of Ritz crackers and it gives you this big family size, and then there's the regular box. The family size is a little bit more expensive, and the regular size is cheaper. Now, just by not knowing anything about unit rate, you might think, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna go with the cheaper one. Well, the one that's cheaper is not always the best deal. And unit rate tells us if it's the best deal. And what unit rate is, is it tells us, okay, here's the amount of something, whether it is ounces, whether it's how many individual things we have, whether it's um, money, things like that. It tells us the amount of something. And we usually do this as a fraction. And then it tells us how much we get for that amount of things. So let's say that the Ritz crackers, maybe the box is 32 ounces, and the regular one is 16 ounces. Okay, the 16 ounce one is $5, the 32 ounce one is $8. And we gotta figure out which one's a better deal. And I'll show you how to do that, okay? Now, let's stick, stay away from the Ritz crackers. Let's go to something a little simpler, and then we'll get back to the Ritz crackers, okay? So let's say that I'm buying candy bars, okay? And I'm going to Walmart. And let's say there's a box of candy bars, 20 candy bars. 20 of them. Let's put candy bars. Let's put CB for candy bars. Make it easier, okay? And it costs me $5 for that box of 20 candy bars, okay? So what I do is the amount goes, we're going to write this as a fraction, the amount goes on the bottom, how many we're getting, and then the price of them goes on the top. $5, okay? Now, I'm paying $5 for those candy bars. So let's say that there's this smaller box that only has 10 candy bars, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, maybe I don't need 20 candy bars. Maybe I just need 10. But what am I going to get a better deal? Because I can always eat candy bars. And let's say that these 10 can this box of 10 candy bars is $4. Now, without even knowing about unit rate, you might think, oh, well, $4 is cheaper than $5. i got to go with this one, right? But you're not getting the same amounts. You've got to compare them in the same terms. So what you have to do is you have to figure out, okay, how much is each candy bar if I buy this box? And how much is each candy bar if I buy this one? And it's very easy to do. So we kind of got to separate them. So let's look at this one first, okay? So I got to figure out, okay, how much am I paying for each candy bar? And what I have to do is I have to divide five by 20. Now, 5 divided by 20, that means you're going to get a decimal, okay? Remember, fraction, division, oh, well, my goodness, what do we know, okay? Because we're basically trying to find out a decimal. Because remember, to change a fraction to a decimal, you divide the, bottom, the top number by the bottom number, and that gives you your decimal, okay? That's why we went over that beforehand, unit rate, okay? So we're going to see how many times 20 will go into 5. Well, we know that it won't go evenly, so it's going to be a decimal. 
So first thing we do is we add our decimal, put a zero behind it, make sure our decimal gets carried up there. Now we divide. So how many times will 20 go into 50? Well, we know two times. That gives us 40. 10 left over, add a zero, bring it down. How many times will 20 go into 100? Well, five times. So the unit rate for each candy bar in this one, right here, is 25 cents per candy bar. Okay? So, according to this, that's how much I'm paying for each candy bar. Now I need to figure out how much I'm paying for each candy bar with this one, and I do the same exact thing. So, I take the top number, and I divide it by the bottom number. So 4 divided by 10. Okay, And we want to re rewrite it a little easier way to make it easier on ourselves. So 4 divided by 10. This number goes in here. 10 goes on the outside. We know that 10 will not go into 4 evenly, so we have to make it a decimal. Add our decimal, bring it up, add our 0. How many times will 10 go into 40? Of course, 4 times. 4 times 10 is 40. That gives us 0.4, but we're using money, so we add a zero on the end for 40 cents, and that tells us the unit rate. That means that for this box that I'm buying for five for four dollars with only 10 candy bars in it, that means for each candy bar I'm paying 40 cents a piece for each candy bar. Where this bigger box, I'm only paying 25 cents per candy bar for this box. Which one's the better deal? Well, of course this one is, because per candy bar, this one's cheaper. That's unit rate, and that's how we use it. And that's something that is really exciting about something like this is because you know, you're thinking, oh, really exciting? Oh, yeah, I'm thrilled, Mr. Maker. Oh, whoop de doo But here's the thing. This is something you can use in the real world, okay? Um, this is going to help you out when you're older and you're on your own and you're living in your own apartment or house or wherever and you've got to pay for your own groceries. Now you're like, eh, whatever, my parents pay for the groceries, I don't care. You get the biggest box possible even if it's not cheaper. But when you're using your own money a little later in life, oh, it'll be real important. So you might as well get used to it now so that you know how to do it to save a bunch of money so you can you know, spend it on fancy cars and fur coats and uh, just like I do. Yeah. Fancy cars, fur coats, expensive electronics, Maserati, yeah, Lamborghini. That's exactly, how I, no, 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 not even close, okay? So that's how you find a unit rate, and that's what you have to do. It's actually pretty simple, okay? Hopefully that clears things up. Hopefully you can do this, and hopefully you can use this later on in life because it's very, very important, and this is one of those answers to the question, why do we do this? We can do this in the real world. This is late. Well, here you go. Save you some money so you can buy all those fancy cars and shoes and clothes and, and jewels and then maybe donate some money to me later on when you become rich and famous. Right? Oh, that's exactly what you're going to do. I know that's what you're going to do.